How many of you have an up-to-date resume? If you got a call today that you have to send it now, you'd be able to hit send now and not make one change and be proud. We're going to talk today about resume writing, and we're going to talk about the different styles, talk about what people look for, what we see, what we think about as we're writing them. But more importantly, what was happening is, it was people whose resumes resonated with the recruiters and spoke to them and gave on paper who they were are the ones who were getting the interviews. It doesn't mean they were better skilled than you. It just means they were better writers. So that is another lesson for today. Be a good writer. the words that you choose, it's the look and feel. Because think about the interviewer or the recruiter when they're looking over at your eyes and you'll see that I've shared my resume with you. It is there, feel free to butcher it, send me feedback, do whatever you, do whatever you feel is necessary to give me feedback because that's one of the tips I will give you. Share your resume with anyone and everyone who wants to see it. And then share it with people who don't even want to see it, but you know are good at it. You want to proofread it. And when it comes to editing, spell check doesn't count. <laughs> I.e. manger. <laughs> you have to think. And we run spell check, we glance it over and we're good. I've been writing this version of my resume for eight years. I did it last week. I went through, and I changed it up on each quarter how I edit it. One time I might read it backwards. One time I might just print it. One time I might just skim over through it or develop certain sections, or maybe as I'm editing, look for parallel structure. Whatever it might be, I'll have a concentrated effort on how I look through it. I hadn't printed it in a while. Oops. Found three typos that have probably been sitting there for eight years. Found different bullet formats on one page versus another. I've been teaching this class for four years. Not one person has mentioned it to me. Gang, you're invited to give me feedback on my resume. Not only the words, the spatial structure of how everything looks, so don't even read it. When you get, an, when you get a resume, whether it's yours or someone else, just look at it. Don't read it. Just look at it and say, how does it look? How does it feel? Is it grabbing my attention? Does it feel compact? Does it feel crowded? Are things sticking out for you that are bringing your eyes to them? I've seen a lot of resumes where the dates are tucked away right next to a lot of other words and you don't see that. I will tell you when it comes to preference for dates, while we're talking about that, is that you give the month and year. Why? Why would I ask something? Show continuity. Show continuity. You don't want to see the gap. So if I'm putting 2010 to 2012, that's 24 months. There's a lot of space in between. So you're either pretending or possibly hiding something of a gap, which usually isn't the case, but that's a perception that goes through a cynical mind of an interviewer because they're seeing 69 or 70 other resumes that are out there. Or you're not as detail oriented, and you just don't know. It shows detail oriented. You're detail oriented when you're doing something like that because it means that easy flow of I'm going from December 2011 and starting a brand new job, January 2012. I can see the whole picture as it's playing out. There's this synchronicity that's attached. But when you have these dates in one place, your eyes kind of go there. Now, it doesn't mean you put your name in 84 font, so it's this big. You don't want to be obnoxious in your resume. You don't want to be to a point where everything's in italic and everything's bold. Because by the, that point, you're actually taking away from what you're trying to have rise out of this resume. But use it in the right occasions. Use it 
sporadically, use it for those special pieces, and all of a sudden it sticks out like a sore thumb, and now you have one. I will tell you when it comes to writing a resume is you should only have one. We have the internal one. I've seen ones where we have the internal. So if I'm applying for something within the company, I'm going to go internal with it. And then I have my outside one. And the only real difference is what? Probably jargon. Jargon. And what else? Some specifics, that's along the lines of jargon, terminology. Well, depending on if you put in a career objective. Objective. It hit me like a ton of bricks when I read an objective that said, we'll work like dog for peanuts. Now, I went home and told my wife, and my wife is somewhat sarcastic. She said, tell him he's barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> When you hand in a resume that has an objective, as the interviewer or recruiter, what am I thinking? No kidding. <laughs> you want to apply for my job as your objective? Wow! Wasted space. Calm down, Tom. The space is wasted because you can get some more lines there. And what you want to do, though, is say, how do I differentiate myself? Well, if everybody has an objective and you don't, you've just differentiated yourself. If everyone else has an objective, but you have a profile that says, here are the skills you want and need, which will cover the objective, you've got everything you want right there. And remember, eyes. Remember, look and feel. Remember, as I start reading, it's the first thing I'm going to read, and bam! I read your qualifications and your profile. I'm going to say, I've got to keep reading. It's your story. It's your book. Have you ever read, read a book where you're reading through the chapters and you're like, yeah, I'm just going to go to sleep now? Where you've had that good book, Tom's future book, where you're reading through <laughs> each of the chapters and you're saying, I can't help but keep reading this and I'm going to wake up really tired the next morning but it doesn't matter that's the resume you want of I have to keep reading and that's what we want so if your profile explains that and it's all inclusive and it doesn't just mean I'll ask you when I talk about skills give me some skills you would include in a profile Okay, good facilitator. Management. Management, people management, administrative management, process management. Organization. Organization, time management. Adaptability. Adaptable. Maybe depending on the position, system proficiency. System proficiency. People person. <laughs> I have to admit that was the first thing I ever said in an interview. <laughs> People person. <laughs> I was lying. <laughs> did you get that job? I did actually. <laughs> the skills to be able to say I'm a people person, I have a great attitude. What am I telling you right now? I'm a great leader. You're what confident. have I told you? You're confident. Okay, I'm confident. <laughs> I'm going to be a good employee. I'm going to be a good employee. But have I truly told you anything? I haven't told you anything. I haven't told you anything that says it's needy, it's me, and it differentiates me from anyone else who's out there. Now, if you say I have management experience with, and you give a couple examples, what might be some examples that are out there? Okay, I've had multiple people that I've managed. I've managed processes. I've created processes. I've managed projects. I'm a project manager. I design projects. I facilitate change at a company. Now you're starting to get into more hard skills. The people skills, great attitude, great leader, those types of things are soft skills. They're nice as 
tack-ons or supplemental to what you have, it's the hard skills you have to put on there because people want to know what you do. Can you sell? Can you serve? Can you design? Can you analyze? And if you don't have that on paper and you just say I'm a people person, you haven't told me anything. Tell me something. Have it complimented. What do you think the number one mistake is when someone finally gets down and puts their first position and it says, I do, at, here's my job title, here's the dates that I do it, and they write in that paragraph? Well, first of all, is it bullets or is it paragraphs? Well, write both. Mine's both. Okay. <laughs> Mine's both. I have a little summary and then key accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's a mixture of both. I actually do a blend. Mine's a paragraph of bullets. It's a space saver. Yeah. But it's parallel and it's consistent throughout the entire document. And that's what's key, that it reads okay, it reads well. It reads well, it's parallel, it's a blend between the two. It's a style, again, no right or wrong. So there isn't a right or wrong going bullets, going paragraphs. But you're writing out that first section of your job that's out there, what's the biggest mistake that people make? They don't tell you anything. They don't tell you anything. Or what do they tell you? The job description. They give you the job description. So if I'm writing my job description, and it is, I was on the phone, I collect from customers who are past due, it's not bad, that's okay. But if you're in a department and maybe you're trying to become a manager within a collections area and you have 15 other people that are going for that same position and most of them are out of collections, what are they going to tell you? I could collect it from people who were past due. You haven't told me anything. So you, the way I like to lay it out in the description is give a description of what it is. Give me something meaty that's going to get my attention and then something that is a true accomplishment that's there. If you were to model this out. So I can say, I've collected from customers who were past due, I've from two and three payments that were past due, I've collected portfolios as high as $500 billion. I've managed as many as 45 people. There was a time when I was managing and there were two teams of 20 plus people and one of the managers left for three months and they didn't replace her and I had both teams. Yeah, I managed 45 people. It is an accurate statement to say I managed up to 45 people in that particular job. So it's important that you're giving something that has meat. So if you've achieved your sales goal and said I hit 100% of my goal, you haven't told me anything. But if you said, I have sold over $200 million worth of balance transfers or products of X, now all of a sudden you have my attention. Because you're giving your job description context. Job description, something that catches my attention, and then some type of accomplishment. 